this would be a good time to pause, think back. What have we been doing in this series? We have covered so many ideas and covered so much ground. What did we do? We began with Taylor series, this idea that functions can be expanded about an input using a polynomial approximation to ascertain their local structure. We got to see some familiar functions in a new light, and we learned about how to expand about different points and what it means to take more and more terms in a Taylor series in order to get a better approximation to your function. Now, from there, we began retelling the story of calculus by looking at limits, and in particular, considering L'Hopital's rule as a way to get at challenging limits using derivatives to see what happens when things are getting really, really small or really, really large. Now, what was nice about this is that we could use Taylor series to understand why L'Hopital's rule worked and then use that to get an idea of the hierarchy of functions to look at how functions grow or shrink at different rates. This led us to the notion of asymptotics, the great theme of this volume, where we introduced the language of big O as the key for understanding how quickly or how slowly functions tend to zero or infinity. Now, this language was somewhat difficult to properly define, but after doing a lot of practice, we saw just how useful this was in making sense of Taylor series computations, in using L'Hopital's rule, in simplifying a lot of the higher order term stuff, as well as being a useful language for discussing various applications to things like computational complexity. Now, we're going to see big O and asymptotics all throughout what we do in the future. The first hint of this comes in derivatives, where we used our understanding of asymptotics to give a new interpretation of the derivative as the coefficient of first order variation. As you change the input just a little bit, you look at how the output changes. The derivative is that coefficient of first order variation. All the other stuff is in the higher order terms, as regulated by big O. Now, this was useful in a number of different contexts as far as interpreting what the derivative really means, as far as seeing how when you vary the input to a function, you get different order terms. And that first order term dominates the higher order terms in the limit as the perturbation of the input goes to zero. This interpretation of the derivative helped us understand differentiation rules, things like the product rule or the chain rule, and why they are true. Now that's it. All of these things we have done in this series, and now there's something that ties it all together. It's the idea of linearization as a useful operation on functions. Think back to when you first learned the derivative in terms of the slope of a tangent line. What you were really learning was how to linearize a function about a particular point. This is a very deep idea that ties together so much of what we have already learned. In what remains of this chapter, we're going to use linearization as an approximation method, we're going to see some new applications of it, and we're going to point towards the future in which linearization plays a prominent role.